In this video, I'll be taking a look at the forthcoming sample library from Kirk Hunter Studios. It's called Concert Strings Adaptive. According to the developers, the library's design is based around two core pillars, the first being sound and the second being playability. So with regards to sound, it's a symphonic sized string section. So there's 12 first violins, 12 second violins, eight violas, eight cellos, and four double basses. It was recorded at the First Presbyterian Church in Santa Monica, so by default it has quite a large spacious sound, although it also has different mic options so you can make it really dry as well if you want to. Regarding playability, all of the patches have the ability to be played monophonically and polyphonically, combining long and short articulations. Generally you don't need to do a lot of key switching, you can just play stuff in but then you can also map things however you want in a more conventional way as well. The library is due to be released later this month, so late Feb 2024. Before I dive into the patches, let me just share a little bit about the context and the particular angle that I'm coming from on this video. Um, I work day to day as a professional composer. Um, I'm not being paid to make this video, but um, Kirk did reach out to me and send me a free copy of the library to try out. And part of the reason that I was interested in trying it out was because of this offer of just being able to play stuff in, I'm somebody who likes to compose via real-time improvisation and just um, capture my live performances inside a DAW. So in the first part of the video, what I'll do is go through most of the patches, just give you a flavor of the sounds in isolation, show you some of the basic settings. And then in the later part of the video, I'd like to show you how I would use it in context layering it with some other orchestral sounds, making some mini kind of sketches, some pieces, and even possibly combining it with some of the other string libraries that I own to just give you a kind of real world example of how this tool might be useful to you and probably how it's gonna be useful to me in the future. So this is the full ensemble patch in its default state as it loads up, um, except that I've assigned the vibrato to the bite on my breath controller here and I'm using CC11, which is Dynamics by default. There's only one dynamic slider. Um, it basically goes all the way down to zero, as you'll hear. Um, so as you can hear, the sound's being choked at the moment. That's because every time I stop breathing, it brings the dynamics slider all the way down to zero. And it seems like this space is uh, comes before the dynamics kind of volume slider in the chain. So um, the reverb is also getting cut off. Thank you. 
So the kind of philosophy of design here is basically you've got a combination of short and longs in a single patch, in this case an ensemble patch. You can set the type of short, so at the moment it's set to spiccato by default, which is quite bitey, but then if you switch it to staccato, you get a slightly more brushy sound. So I actually quite like having it on staccato for most of what I'm doing because I find it blends well with the sustains. I want to show you how it sounds with the bone dry setting, which is just using the close mics. Um, it's actually a very full sound. Obviously, as I hope I'll demonstrate later on in the video, you'd kind of start there to get your basic sound and then you'd refine, you'd split out the parts to the other instruments and you'd immediately get a much more focused sound by shaping each, each part. Obviously, I would rarely use it bone dry without adding a bit of reverb, so I'll just give you a sense of what that sounds like. The library actually comes with two different patches you can load up. So with these Velocity, Vibrato and CC Control patches, um, it responds more to how hard you play. The idea being that you don't even need to have a fader to control the dynamics. Um, I mean, by default, it's hard, it's hard to play very quietly. Um, I would probably put it on uh, very strong. It's not something that I would probably use myself. I like to have a bit more fine grain control, but you could imagine that being useful in some circumstances. There's also this kind of cool function where if you're holding down some notes like that and then you play the lowest note on the keyboard and you, you hit that lowest note hard or softly, you can control the dynamics like that. I'll just give you a blast of the violins. Um, I'm going to give you these, uh, j just because it works better for my setup and avoids this kind of choking sound, I'm going to be playing these all with the bone dry setting and just putting it through some external reverb. Sometimes close mic settings on string sample libraries are a bit weedy sounding or not very satisfying, whereas for me these actually sound really nice and fat and when, you know, it does give you quite a lot of tonal control over the sound of the library. One thing that's lovely about this library is the vibrato intensity is very smooth, the way that it responds to control. So if I use a fader here instead of my breath controller, you can see the slider moving here. 
So no vibrato. And also the uh, the dynamic response is very smooth. I would say that's one of the characteristics of this library is that it has this very pristine, very consistent, playable, smooth quality. And the sort of the negative aspect of that you might say is that it lacks imperfection because it's doing such a great job of kind of doing what you tell it to do. Um, it This isn't one of those libraries that kind of has a real characterful sound, um, like something like Chamber Strings, Spitfire Chamber Strings, or the Afflatus series, or, you know, even something like Cinematic Studio Strings. There's a lot more grit and sort of uh, imperfection to the sound. This is not that library. This library has a very lush, smooth, um, sound to it. And as I think you'll hear later on, that's very positive, especially when it comes to blending well with other instruments and kind of giving you the the sort of the bass layer. It's quite easy to add imperfections or character to a sound by layering certain characterful samples in. So yeah, anyway, on with the video. Let's have a listen to the violas. Here's them dry with none of my added reverb. True legato is on by default. Essentially that's a slurred legato, so it's a very smooth transition. Bowed legato is a kind of... The difference between these is somewhat subtle but it essentially means that there's going to be a simulated bow change, so there's a little bit more attack on the legato transition. In order to hear that, you have to make sure that this is turned on, so you can turn it on per section if you're playing an ensemble patch. Um, Here's True Legato again. So to me that's quite a subtle difference. If you do want that kind of exaggerated portamento type of transition, you can activate that with a key switch. So you can hear that slight sort of ew, ew, ew. Um, You do have the option of a slightly more uh, dramatic sounding transition. Versus. Let's have a listen to that on the violins. That's a little odd sounding to me. What I would probably do if I was writing a piece that required a particular portamento moment, I would just uh, use a different library or layer in, you know, some solo strings or something to kind of massage that transition a bit. Onto the cellos. So this is bone dry, by the way. Just to remind you what it sounds like with the um, default space, I'll just put that on. So 
So that's got some added reverb on it as well by default. So we've listened to staccato, I'll play spiccato for the cellos. It's a pretty respectable sound. So with detache, now when I play a short note it'll play a, a slightly longer bow stroke. Good if you want those kind of quite broad types of phrases. And finally, bass. So to clarify, um, the way that it's responding, it is velocity sensitive um, when it comes to the shorts right now. So you have this slider here that says velocity sensitivity that you can turn you can uh, turn up or down. Um, so the long notes are being dictated by my breath, and then the short notes. I think it's a combination of breath and how hard I'm playing. Um, so that in practice gives me quite a natural sense of control over the sound. It makes it easy to play things like this. Because I don't have to use a controller or my breath to emphasize those notes. You can also have um, the attack of the sound modulate depending on how hard you play. Um, I just tend to leave it on the default setting to be honest. Let's have a quick look at the pits. There's also something called dampened pits, which I quite like. Dampened Bartok Pizzicato is one of the slightly more unique offerings.
You've got Colenos as well. They sound pretty nice, quite usable. So that's a quick fly through of some of the sounds. Let's get into some writing and composing and hopefully you can get a sense for how it works in context. So say I'm just gonna start with an empty project and just load up this sketch patch, this um, full ensemble patch, no plan here. Something like that, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here we go. So I'm hearing like a secondary violin layer that we could maybe stick on top. So I'm just going to duplicate the patch. Um, this is how I tend to work, is I just use a load of full ensemble patches at first, unless I'm hearing something really specific. Okay, I made a slight mistake there. And then I'm going to do something different here. I think I'll have a sustain. And because it's a sketch patch, I can just play octaves. And how about like a big boom pizzicato at the bottom of each of those just to kind of layer with what's there. I'm sort of imagining that I'm writing for a TV show and I'm on a deadline um, and I just want to get something kind of that, that sounds right, that sounds kind of full and functional as quickly as possible. So I'm not going to make these sketches super polished, but I want them to be presentable to a client, say. By the way, in case you're wondering, I'm using capture recording, so I don't tend to press the record button in the DAW. After playback's finished, I press the key command and whatever I just played magically appears. I'm gonna add a little flute to the top line, I think. Now let's say we like this, we like how it's working, we just want to kind of clean up the string sound a little bit. So rather than just having everything on these ensemble patches, um, I'll start to load up some individual patches. What I could do is, with that high um, sustained melody note, I could paint in a little patch from chamber strings, say. One that I happen to know has a very nice delicate sound at the high end. I could maybe even replace the top note um, of the Kirk Hunter strings. Cool, I'm quite happy with that. You know, um, that took about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, let's just delete all of that and do something else. Um, so how about um, something a bit more like with with slurred pairs? I like slurred pairs because um, with this library you can do them and most of the time you can't. You know, those kinds of things. So. 
I like that idea. Let's try that. So something like one, two, three, four, da 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 da. Oh, we're about one twenty. Okay, good. Um, four four times sig. Let's see where this goes. Okay, a little improvisation. Dum, 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 dum. Boom. I'm gonna actually use the pizzicato dampen patch. Oops, no. Want that to be a little bit softer, actually. That's fine. It'll do for now. I'm hearing uh, actually kind of woodwind colours in between clarinet. sound a bit more distant. Um. I think um, like a pair of horns, we'll put it in this space. I just wanted the top line in octaves, maybe. Let's just put that in. I'll create another sketch patch. Oh, I'll just treat myself to a violin patch, why not, actually? Obviously, the more you play in multiple lines, each with their own expressive arc, the more it starts to sound real. When you're kind of just playing chords and you're just controlling the dynamics for the whole chord, it sa can sound a bit artificial. Let's add a little percussive element just so we can, uh, feels like that would finish it off. Maybe an additional string line there. What I like about just using a sketch patch rather than an individual instrument patch in these kinds of cases is I don't have to decide in advance which range I'm going to be in. If I feel like adding an octave, lower octave, I can just do it there, you know. Actually, now that I've got a clear idea what I want, I am going to load up a specific patch. Um, it's going to be violas. The only thing I don't really like is this pizzicato note, so I'm just going to replace it with one from another library. Yeah, one, two. See? You know, just that kind of detail, having it be exactly what I heard in my head. Makes so much difference. Cool, let's just play it from the start.
let's try something a bit more kind of flowy, you know? Kind of thing, <laughs> something along those lines. At least I'll start there. Tidy this up slightly. I'll just make it all the same velocity, I think. Oops. Harry Potter esque. Maybe a top line creeps in. Try some tremolo. I haven't actually demonstrated the tremolo yet. Again, this is on the bone dry setting. Um, here's what it sounds like in the default space. Not a huge fan of it. Let's try it in context. It actually sounds okay in context. It probably wouldn't be my first choice. Let's maybe put this in the violins, just so it's a bit cleaner, a bit more um, focused kind of sound. Sounds pretty good. Um, I'm going to layer that with a clarinet. And you know, the beautiful thing is my clarinet is set up pretty much exactly the same way as I have these strings set up, so I can just copy paste it and it will take all of the CC data as well. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that it's, again, has the right kind of perspective. What I might do is re-perform the CC using my breath controller. And bring the overall volume down. Let's use the CSW flutes, because they're particularly tasty. Beautiful. These are Cinematic Studio woodwinds, just in case you're wondering. Just a bit of texture. It's a little bit kind of uh, aggressive, that ending, isn't it? Let's just adjust that. Um, what I might try, um, and I'm, you know, I think that sounds pretty fine as it is, but what I might try is um, just layering in a real gem of a patch, which is the String Runs patch from Orchestral Tools. It's from their Orchestral String Runs library, and it's just this playable patch. And it's just really, like, dirty. kind of just blending it in. In this instance, I'd be tempted just to only use the string runs patch for the very, just for the top part where it's really, where your ear picks up a lot of detail to the sound, having something that is a little bit more sonically complex. Um, just that kind of works for me.
yeah, quite happy with that. Um, let's do one more. Again, just starting completely from scratch. Should we do a kind of action cue to finish? I'm going to load up the spiccato short, trans uh, short notes here because I want to really dig in. Bit scrappy. Let's just throw some stuff on top of that. In fact, for this, I think I'm going to load up the Spicatissimo patch, um, which isn't available from this drop-down list of shorts for whatever reason. Bone dry, please. Um, let's double that in cellos as well. Just stick that in a violin uh, for now, just so it's a bit less fuzzy and fluffy. I don't want it to be dead on the grid because I sort of like the fact that it's loose, but... Just add a bit more dynamic range by using automation, just so we have a really big ending. Trombones? horns um, escalating. Maybe some like more strings at this point. Let's just get this, another sketch pad up. So I'm going to use that string runs patch, I think. Some high winds, some very high winds, in fact. I mean, that's fine, it's a bit polite. That's fairly close to what I was thinking. some disturbing gong sounds is what I need. You know what I mean? There it is. Maybe not the last one. So for me, these spiccatos don't quite have the bite that I require. So much bite. Finally, just a few uh, timpani hits. Oh, 
lovely. So yeah, so the the Kirk Hunter strings that stayed in are the main kind of spiccato parts, but I layered them with cinematics. I used them bone dry in the end, um, oh, with a bit of Valhalla room. Um, and then, yeah, you've got these little bits, which I think are fine. These bits. And then, you know, these bits. You know, because of that lushness and the, the, the tone quality and the sort of the softness of it, it's it blends quite nicely. Um, yeah, and then what else? Um, this last little bit. Thanks for joining me on another sample library exploration. Kirk Hunter Concert Strings Adaptive will be coming out later this month, uh, end of Feb 2024. It's going to be on at the initial price of 259 US dollars and then later 499 at the full price. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, my first impressions were it was great fun to play. Overall, the sort of workflow bonus of being able to just smash stuff in at the keyboard and then kind of pull out any parts from that or just layer on top of that. Um, it just means I can work very quickly and get ideas down. So I was very happy about that. Um, a few of the negatives were um, specifically the some of the portamento transitions were a bit weird. Um, the tremolo, you know, I think I generally like a bit more just uh, a bit more chaotic sounding tremolos. I guess maybe the main downside is if you're more into the sound of like really close gritty strings, then maybe this isn't the library for you. Um, but I did hear on the grapevine that there might be a chamber strings library coming, so keep an eye out for that. Um, also check out my uh, interview with Kirk Hunter on this channel. If it's out already then I'll stick a, a link at the end of this video or down in the description. Um, he, uh, as well as teasing the chamber strings, he just talks a bit about some of the process behind making the library, which I find quite fascinating to hear about. Um, so anyway, yeah, thank you for your attention, and let me know any questions that you have. I'll try my best to get back to you, and in the meantime, happy composing, and see you on the next video.